Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you guys how I wet sand and buff. Um, we're gonna. I'm going to show you on just one of the panels that I painted yesterday. Um, let me show you the materials and stuff that I use as far as the wet sanding part, and then afterwards I'll show you the buffing part. Um, I actually took a Dura block years ago and cut it down a little bit, just so that it was the same length as a piece of wet sanding paper. So I like to block sand everything. I start with a thousand grit, unless I need to go less than that. I can go down to 800 or 600 if I need to. So I'm gonna block it with a thousand grit, block it with 1500 grit. Then I'll just fold up a piece by hand with 2000 grit and do that. And then after that, I will go to my DA with my interface pad, which this is just a foam pad that is uh, Velcro backed. And I will hit it with a 3000 grit tri-sack and then a 5000 grit. I do have 8000 grit. I don't plan on using it on these parts. Um, they're pretty good. A uh, little bit of orange peel and um, it shrank back a little bit because I baked it twice just to make sure it was dry so that I can wet sand and buff it today. Um, really clean, color's hard to see. Little piece of dirt right here. Looks like a little piece of lint or something got in there. That'll wet sand right out. But other than that, overall, um, really good shape. No fish eyes or anything like that. Another little speck of dirt right there, but it's very, very, very minor. So we'll start with a thousand grit on a sanding block. And then we'll do the 1500 on the same sanding block. And then, like I said, 2000, I'm gonna do by hand with just folding it into thirds. Um, what I like to do first is, you can use a squeegee or a paper towel or anything like that. Um, I just wet the panel down with some water. This is just water. Um, you can put soap in it if you want. I usually don't have to. Um, soap does help it glide a little smoother. So once you get it, you're done painting it and everything and it's sat and dried, take either a paper towel or a water squeegee and wipe the whole panel down. Make sure you wipe it off really good. What we're doing is making sure there's no dirt on the panel. Because if you have dirt on the panel, a uh, speck of anything on there, it gets between the sandpaper and the paint, it can really start scratching it. Worse than what the sandpaper will do. So I'm not gonna show you every piece wet sanding and buffing, I'm just gonna do it on one. It's kind of just repetitive. So I'm gonna get a piece of 1,000 grit sandpaper. And we're just gonna take the block in here and we're gonna wrap the block with it. Um, you can soak this sandpaper in water in a bucket for a little bit. That definitely helps soften it up. Uh, make sure you wet it really good. A good thing too, when you wet sand and buff is to keep everything really wet. That helps keep your sandpaper moving. So basically what we're doing is the same thing basically we've done for all the filler primings and everything else. We're just gonna sit here and block sand it. Now, if you have like four or five coats of clear on it and you want to make sure it's really, really flat and straight, the 1000 grit will get it pretty flat and straight, but you can start with like an 800 or even a 600 real quick and knock it down with that first. But, um, cause anytime you spray material on a panel, the more and more coats you do, the ripplier it gets. So it, it just, nature, you know, it just ends up getting ripplier again. So. I know you, I've block sanded and done this twice to this panel. Now I'm doing it for the third time. Just unfortunately something you have to do if you want a nice, smooth, flat, straight paint job. There is zero ways around it. You can start with a D, you can just use a DA the whole way through, but you'll have ripples when you're done. I've tried it multiple times. See people do it on TV. See people do it on YouTube. It does work, um, but I can never seem to get it perfectly flat. The uh, foam pad definitely helps that process. 
So I just hit this little spot here with a thousand. Let's uh, wipe it off. We'll just use that paper towel. I gotta go get my squeegee. But for right now, we'll just wipe this off of the paper towel. Just so you can see what it looks like. It should be a lot duller looking. And when you're wet sanding, make sure that you don't have any clumps of clear coat on there. If you have any sort of clumping or anything like that, then your clear coat's not dry enough yet. I always use a moving blanket and I set it up on my stand and then I put my parts on top of it. And these are easy enough to just uh, put in your washing machine and wash them every so often. But I just want to show you here and then I'll turn the camera off and I'll finish the thousand grit. But I just want to show you how quick you can really knock this down. Let it dry there for a second. Get our paper towel. The reason why I'm using paper towels right now is because I can dry it quicker than the squeegee right now so that you guys can see what's going on. This was literally, I don't know, a minute or two of wet sanding. See how smooth that is? Little tiny imperfection right there we'll go back and get. I gotta get around this edge better. But as far as like the flat surface right here, it's just water. It's hard to show this on the camera, but you can see it's no more orange peel or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the thousand grit all the way down. And then we will come back and do the 1500 grit with the block once again, and then we'll work our way up to 5,000. So I'm gonna pause this, finish the thousand, and I'll be back. Okay, it's been a few minutes. I'm still working on the thousand grit. I'm not completely sanded down yet, but this was that spot of fuzz that was in there. See how it's still got a mark? Almost looks like an E. Um, I'm going to sand this a little bit more so that you guys can see it. it'll go away. Um, <clears throat> you always want to try to get all your imperfections, all your your um, orange peel, dirt, and everything out with a thousand grit. And then basically after that, you're just working your way up the grits to basically smooth out the thousand grit sanding marks. So basically the 1500 is going to smooth out the thousand grit sanding marks. The 2000 is going to smooth out the 1500 grit sanding marks and so on. And basically you're just working your way up and the higher grits you go, the less uh, buffing you need to do, less compound you're going to waste and stuff like that. Um, don't expect this to be a quick process. It's just not, there's no, no fast way around this. If you want it to look good and flat, these panels have a little bit more orange peel than I usually spray, but because these things, sway around when you're spraying them. It's really hard to keep a consistent um, spacing between the gun and the panel because it's always swaying on you. So I would rather have a little bit more orange peel on these than to try to hose it on and have them run because runs are way harder to get out than orange peel. And also keep in mind, um, don't try to sand the whole car down with one piece of sandpaper. It's going to take you a few pieces of sandpaper to sand the car down. Um, it's not worth trying to save a little money because the sandpaper, when it's fresh, it cuts better. It cuts quicker and straighter, in my opinion. And also, don't push hard. Just kind of let the sandpaper glide on top of the surface. We're not looking to dig into this. Because if you start going really hard like this, you're going to leave lines in it. So you just want to kind of go across pattern. Take your time. I People have told me in the past, I was taught that to really properly wet sand a car to like a show car finish, that you should take a little section like this and do count 50 strokes per grit in that section. You know, so if you take this little section and you just keep going over and over it until you hit at least 50 strokes, which I think it takes more than that. Maybe 50 strokes in this little area here. But that's what they say, you know. I just go until I wipe it off and it's all gone. All the uh, orange peel, any dirt that's in there is gone. Now, like that little piece of fuzz, you'll never see that when it's wet sanded and buffed. Um, 
obviously if a black fly lands in there and I try to wet sand it out, chances are I'm probably not gonna get it out unless it was on like the second or third coat of clear. Then you have the possibility of getting it out. But if you usually, if you get like a piece of black dirt in the first or second coat of clear, you're kind of screwed. It's very unlikely to get it out because what will end up happening is you might wet sand it out and it might be gone, but at that point you burn through all the clear and now you're starting to get into your color. And at that point you have no choice but to repaint it. There's no fix to that. So let's check this and see if we got rid of that fuzz area. And expect to get dirt, no matter if you use a spray booth or anything. You know, I've actually gotten really good results painting a part that I don't even care about out in the driveway. And then, you know, then I get no dirt in it. So there's really no rhyme or reason to it. It just happens. Let me grab another paper towel. I'll just wipe that off real quick. And we'll see if that spot's gone. A tiny bit left, I can see. And it's good to just stop and check every once in a while because there's really no point in sanding it more than you need to. So if you look, where are we at here? Still got a little bit there. So I'm gonna sand, I'm gonna just sand that spot a little bit more and we'll see. Once again, don't don't push hard. You can go multiple directions, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's best to kind of work yourself around in different directions. It's a very boring job. Um, turn the music on, kind of just zone out and sand. It takes longer than sanding primer. Obviously because of how many grits you have to go through. It's completely gone. So as you can see that imperfection is now gone. It's smooth with the rest of the surface around it. So I just figured I'd show you that real quick. I'm going to finish up this thousand grit around these edges here. I'll take the thousand grit off of the block and just hit it by hand real quick around the edges because I don't want to take the sanding block and start going hard on this edge because I'm going to burn through that edge. There are three coats of clear on here, so it is pretty thick, but you always want to be safe. Better safe than sorry. So I'm going to pause this, finish up the 1,000, and I'll be back for the 1,500. Okay, I'm done with the 1,000 grit. Everything's nice and smooth. We're going to do the same thing with 1,500 grit. We're going to wrap it in the block. And we'll do the exact same thing we did with the thousand. Now, when you guys are painting parts, you don't have to lay it down perfectly flat and have this glass-like spray finish. Uh, I can do it sometimes. I, I'll be the first one to admit, I cannot always do it. I know some guys that can. You know, that's just more learning, more years of practice. Um, if, if it's looking a little rough for you, but you don't really have a lot of dirt or anything in like in it like that, um, just put an extra coat of clear. You can always fix it with wet sanding and buffing it. You know, if your orange peel is a little much or anything like that. So I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna 1500 this down really good. Cause what you wanna do is you wanna 1500 it for a while, just to make sure you get all those thousand grit marks out of there because once you get past the 1500, it gets harder and harder to get those thousand grit marks out of there. So really take your time and concentrate and work this 1500 until you think you've gotten all the scratches out. Um, I've seen people guide coat clear. I don't do that. I've never done it. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It very well could, but I've never tried it. So I'm gonna sit here with 1500 for a little bit and knock this down. Now this top edge I hit lightly with thousand grit and I did it by hand. I folded the sheet into thirds and I just lightly went along that top surface. So I'm gonna pause this, finish up to 1500. 
Okay, just finished up with the 1500. Did the exact same thing I did with the 1000. It's not gonna really look much different. I wish I can get a better view of this. You kind of see, see how it's pretty dull. You can see all the sanding marks and everything in it. Now, as we start getting higher up in the grits, the shinier and shinier that paint will actually start getting again. So now I'm gonna take some 2000 grit and this one, I'm just gonna fold it into thirds. Now that gives you one, two, three surfaces you can use. I don't like to put my sand, my uh, seam this way. I always like to do it this way. So I'm gonna wet this down real good. And now take my time and go over this whole panel with 2000 grit. Then after that, we're on to the DA with 3,000 and 5,000, and then we'll be ready to uh, run the buffer on it. We are either gonna use two or three different compounds, probably just need to use two. Um, see how that paper was gripping there a little bit? If you let the paper soak for a little while in water, it won't do that on you. You can also put a little soap in your water and that'll help it to not grip as much. But once this softens up from being wet, it'll stop doing that. Um, I used to use, I still have some, the 3M buffing system, which is a three part compound, one, two, and three. And each one has a cor corresponding foam pad. So compound number one has a white pad. Compound number two has a black pad. And the third compound has a blue pad. I've used that for years. Um, and I started using a product called Wizard, which I'll show you. And I can usually get it better than what it looked like with the 3M with only two compounds. And it seems to cut and polish quicker. Um, it's just my opinion from using 3M for so many years and then switching to this Wizard. I'll show you guys when I get ready to do that. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet sand this panel all the way through to 5,000 grit and we'll just buff this one and then I'll do the other ones off camera. So I'm gonna sit here and do this with 2,000 grit. As you can see, I'm kind of just switching and going every which direction to just kind of smooth things out. Okay, done with the 2,000 grit. It's taking me about 10 minutes or so per piece of sandpaper on this panel. See how it's starting to get shinier? How we're starting to see a little bit of a reflection? So now we're gonna, I'm sorry, I just got done with the 2000 grit. So now we're gonna jump up to 3000 grit. I might've said 1500. But you can see how there is no imperfections, no dirt, nothing out of the ordinary. Now, if this were a newer car piece to go on a newer vehicle, that, like I said, this had a little bit more orange peel than normal. Um, if I were going to put this on a new vehicle, I would hit it with a thousand grit real quick, 1500 grit, and then I would hit two and three, but I probably wouldn't sand every bit of the orange peel out. I probably would just go over it quick, knock all the dirt out of it, and then work my way up to 3000 and buff it because all the new factory cars have some orange peel in them. So you don't really want to get this panel completely smooth. Believe it or not, a smooth panel versus one with a little bit of orange peel will also affect the color, in my opinion. I seem to notice a difference in it. So now we're gonna, we have the foam pad attached to the DA. We're gonna put a piece of 3000 grit tri-sag on it. And same thing again, this gets wet water. Um, you don't want to spin this at a real high RPM. Just keep it low. Um, we're not at a race for anything. You know, figure, plan on spending. You want a really nice wet sanding and buff job. This panel right here, I bet you it's gonna take hour, hour and a half minimum per panel. So, you know, if you're doing a car for somebody, you need to keep that in mind. Let's say somebody wants a show paint job. A, you have to keep in mind that you're gonna to wanna to put down more coats of clear, which is gonna cost more money for clear. You're gonna to have to wet sand anywhere from 800 grit all the way up to 8,000 grit. You know and then you have to buff so you figure if it's going to take you two to two and a half hours per panel you know an average car old car has one two three four five six seven eight nine panels because you have the fenders the hood the doors the roof the quarters and the trunk lid figure it as nine panels 
So if you have nine panels and roughly they take you two and a half hours per panel to wet sand and buff, you have to add all that up. You have to add up your labor. You know, you've got three, four days of wet sanding and buffing minimum, you know, sometimes a full week, just depending on how ambitious you are. And if you want to work, you know, 10, 12 hour days of wet sanding and buffing, but that's really the only way you're going to get a glass like perfectly smooth, no imperfection paint job. And even at that, you're still going to get a speck of dirt here and there in the color that will always be a different color than the color. That's just, it's just how it is. I've never seen one that wasn't. Um, you know, you can also, if you're doing a show paint job, I put three coats of clear on this. I could have came back and 600 grid blocked it down really good and then shot two or three more coats of clear over top of it and then re wet sand and buffed it. A lot of guys do that. Usually I don't tend to do that unless I need to. Um, these, these panels actually look really good. I think they'll turn out just fine. Um, these panels are not for this car that's in here. These are for a friend of mine. Um, so now what I'm going to do is we'll get the 3000 grit going. Let me get the hose plugged in and show you how that works. And I like to use the 3000 grit for a little while. I'll let it run on there for a little while just to help shine it up. Seems like it starts shining it up pretty nicely. And then the 5,000 will do even more. I mean, I could show you a piece of 8,000 grit, but I really don't think it's necessary. I got the wrong end on the sander, so it's a little hard to get into this uh, air hose. These fittings are high flow fittings. So these have a bigger hole in the center of them. I use them for the spray guns, but I basically have them on everything anymore. So you want to wet this down really well. Just do one half at a time. Really want to wet this pad down. And um, it's always good to make sure that you wipe your panel down between every coat of wet sanding. Because if you pick up any little piece of dirt or grit, you can wipe it off and usually the next wet sanding will take care of it. I'm just kind of letting this soak in here for a second. Um, Dirt, when you're wet sanding, is the worst thing you can have. Try to always keep a clean environment when you're doing that part of it. Um, like I said, I use these moving blankets. I put them on top of these, A, to keep the back sides of the panels from scratching up, and because I just throw them in the washer, and then I know they're clean, and there's not a lot of dirt in them or anything like that. So I don't know what this is set at. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. And I just, so all I wanna do is go along. Take your time with it. Um, the biggest thing with these higher grit sandpapers is to make sure you have enough water on the surface. Because if you don't have enough water on the surface, you're not doing anything. thousand grit I'll use a little bit less water just so that this it's kind of touchy you want to use a lot of water but you don't because the more I think about it and the more I remember um, if you use too much water your sandpaper is kind of gliding on a surface of water so you got to kind of find a happy medium if you look here you see as I'm sanding you see this white that's a good sign that's the clear coat so at that point, you know, you have the right amount of water on there. I think I had a little bit too much at first, but as you can see now that we're getting this white, we know that we are actually doing something. We're actually sanding the clear now. I put a little bit, a little too much on at first, but I also was trying to wet that brand new piece of sandpaper. 
So let me grab a towel. I'll wipe off this section right here and we'll see what it looks like. And then I'll finish the 3,000 and we'll go to 5,000 grit. squeegee I don't know where I put it I might have took it up to the house because I'm gonna waste an awful lot of paper towels today if I don't find it now a lot of guys stop at 3,000 grit you don't really have to go higher than 3,000 grit if you don't want to spend the money on the sandpaper just keep in mind every grit you go higher is it gets easier and easier to wet or to buff so basically, in a way, the higher grit you go, you're kind of like buffing it with sandpaper. But see that shine? Look at the difference in that. How it's already starting to shine back up again. Obviously, it's still milky looking, but it's way better than like this 2,000 grit. See the 2,000 grit? You can see all the sanding lines and everything in it. 3,000 grit. There are no real sanding lines or anything visible in it. This is a very hard color to try to video here and show you. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the 3,000 grit on this and then we'll come back and do the 5,000. Okay, 3,000 grit is all done. See how nice that's starting to look? So all this takes, guys, is time. The more time you spend, the better you're gonna be. So we're gonna take this 3,000 grit piece off. Go get a piece of 5,000. Um, I just set up paper towels and I kind of try to just keep all my sandpaper off of anything that could possibly have dust or dirt on it. You'd be amazed at what a piece of sand between wet sanding paper will do to your finish. It's fixable, yes, but it just starts you back at the beginning. It's happened to me many a times. You get one little grit of sand underneath your sandpaper and you run it a couple passes, you'll hear it. And then you go to take that sandpaper off and you just see the lines of where that piece of dirt was. So now we're gonna go with 5,000 grit. We're gonna do the same thing we did with the 3,000. I'm gonna wet this pad real good. After this, we'll get the buffing, buffer out and we'll start buffing this so you guys can see what it looks like. Um, I use a rotary buffer, just a round, just a, a seven inch the wall buffer that just spins. Um, the new thing that everybody likes to use is the ones that work like a DA, which uh, dual action buffer, where it not only spins, but it kind of rotates and spins at the same time. Um, those are great for polishing. Um, I don't think that they're very good for cutting your first buffing. Your initial buffing, I still think you need to use a regular buffer. Um, I just use a regular buffer for everything because I've been doing that for 25 years or 30 years, however long it's been, forever. Um, so I'm just used to it. I remember when I used to buff a long time ago, um, everything was wool pads. So you'd get a brand new wool pad and you start buffing, you'd have wool everywhere. There'd be wool on the walls, there'd be wool all over the floor. Um, it was just a mess. And then they came out with the foam pads which I love now. Um, I think it's, some people say it's easier to burn the edges and some people say it's not as easy to burn the edges. In my opinion, I think it's not as easy to burn the edges with the foam as it was with the wool. I think the wool was a lot more aggressive, um, but you know, people have their different theories on that. So let's uh, hit this with 5,000 grit. Same thing we did. Just keep running the sander until you start to see those the milky white of the clear start coming off. Right now, this is a little bit too wet, but this is a brand new piece of paper. So like I, like I did on the first 3000 grit, I did this at first to just start to get the sandpaper to soak up water and then it'll start sanding. You know, the longer you take doing this stuff, the less buffing you have to do. I mean, you can buff from 1500 grit. It's gonna take a long time, and you're gonna waste a lot of compound. 
compound. All this stuff is expensive. The sandpaper is expensive. The compound is expensive. You know, there's really no cheap way of doing it, unfortunately. And it's not getting any cheaper as it get, as the days go by. I mean, a gallon of this color is a thousand dollars for just the color. The reducer is another couple hundred. And then you have your primers and your clear coats and your epoxies and your sandpapers. I mean, you're looking at a minimum of two thousand dollars just in materials. So you got to keep in mind when somebody gives you a quote. Let's say you take your car to a body shop and you want to get a paint job. And you just want a nice paint job. You don't want a show quality paint job. Just a really nice driver paint job. And they quote you eight to ten thousand dollars, and you're like, holy crap, that's a lot of money. You got to keep in mind they're going to have two thousand, probably twenty five hundred dollars just in materials. Okay, and then you have the labor involved of the initial sanding, the body work that needs to be fixed. The filler priming, the blocking, the possible refiller priming and blocking. You have your epoxies, you know, your 2K primers, all that sandpaper they're using. And then they get into the wet sanding and buffing. You got all this stuff. I I'll bet you would be close to $3,000. So if you think about it, a $10,000 paint job and you have $3,000 in materials, that only leaves $7,000 in labor, which really is not that much money considering how many hours it takes to get an extremely nice paint job. Now, show quality paint jobs, I believe, are going for like 20 grand plus, you know? Now you can start seeing the white foam. I'll grab a paper towel here in a minute and we'll wipe this off so you can see it. I'm going to have to try to find my water squeegee. I think it might be up front. I have a, a water squeegee that I usually use to wipe off between coats. I've had that thing for probably 25 years. I think I have two of them, actually. One of them might be in one of my cars. Now, you know, you can spend a lot of money on clear coat, too. Some clear coat makes a difference more than others, um, but I don't really personally think an $800 gallon of clear is gonna be much better than a two to $400 pot, uh, thing of clear on an old car. Because what I've learned over the years, what I've been taught, I don't know if this is correct or not, but when you buy a $300 gallon of clear, that might only have a five year UV protection. Let's say you buy an $800 gallon of clear. That might have a seven year UV protection. But when you're painting an old car, your old car is not gonna be in the sun seven days a week, 365 days a year. You know, I mean, it could be, but rarely. And even if it was, I think that five year UV protection is gonna last a lot longer than five years, especially I think because if you put more coats of clear on, I think that's based on a two coat coverage. So if you're putting four to five coats of clear on, I understand that you're probably wet sanding off at least a coat, coat and a half, you know, between wet sanding and buffing, but you're still gonna have more protection on there than you would with just the two coats. So this is the 5,000 grit. And always when you're wiping, check your towel. Make sure you don't see any of the color of the paint. If you do, you know you went through somewhere. And that's usually not a good day. But wait until you see how shiny this has gotten with the 5,000 brick. Now 8,000 gets it even more, but on these panels, we don't need it. But I mean, look at that shine from just sandpaper. We haven't even touched the buffer. So like I said, if you just take your time with the sandpaper, I wish I can get a better Maybe if I stand it upright, it's not really doing it justice. Now you can start to see. See how you can start seeing a reflection in it? You can see the bench over there and you can start seeing a reflection in this. But that's without even buffing it. That's just by merely going over it with the sandpaper. Now this sandpaper is expensive. Um, heck, I think they want to eat $10 a piece. Um, your best bet's to buy a box. I think there's 15 pieces in a box and it lasts a long time. Now this sandpaper, you can get 
I've gotten a whole car out of one piece. So if you think about it, if it's $10 for one piece of that sandpaper, but you get a whole car out of it, you know, because between the 3,000 and the 5,000, so that's $20 and you get a whole car out of it. And it saves you an hour, probably more than that, probably a few hours of buffing with compounds. So A, you're saving labor on buffing and B, you're saving compounds. So it kind of works itself out in a way, but I think it makes it a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this 5,000 and then we're gonna start buffing this. Okay, 5,000 grits done. It's got a real nice shine to it. Now we're gonna get ready to start polishing it. I use a DeWalt buffer, seven inch DeWalt buffer. This is only the second one of these I've had in like 25 years. Now don't get me wrong, I don't do this every day. So I'm not using the crap out of it, but it's last, they last a long time. I'm actually gonna use a new white pad and a new black pad today. And I'm gonna use this pad to do this whole car right here. So, so we're gonna use the white pad first and we're gonna use this turbo cut. This is by Wizard. Um, let me take you back here and I'll show you the 3M stuff I have in the cabinet still. These are all those parts I painted the other day. Okay, so this stuff I use for just junk. But uh, this is the three part process. There's a white here. This would be part number one with the white pad. They make it really easy for you. White with a white pad black with a black pad, and then this blue. So the lids are the color of the pad that you're supposed to use. Um, like I said, I, I tried this wizard probably about uh, maybe close to a year ago, and uh, I really, really like it. I think it works better in my opinion. Might just be in my head, I'm not sure, but, um, and it smells good too. So let me uh, get this buffer set up and we will start buffing this out. Okay. We're going to take some of this turbo cut and kind of just put it on here. It's going to take a little bit more at first because this is a brand new pad and there's none of it soaked into the pad yet. And also when these pads dry, I usually just take a wooden paint stick and I'll spin it and then just run the wooden paint stick on it to clean it out. Um, I guess you can wash them too. I've never done that. Used to wash the old wool pads and just try to center it on here the best you can. Um, I try not to go super high RPM and what you want to do is kind of like lightly smear this all around first. Just take your time, you don't want to push hard or anything like that. Just kind of let it float over the surface. And there it is. That's what it looks like. Obviously, I still need to run the polish on it. But I'll get this buffed out with this compound and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, that first compound is done. Only took about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. Now, another trick you can do before you go to your next polishing compound is if you look here, you have compound on this wheel. 
um, to help clean the wheel and to kind of break the compound down a little bit. If you wet this panel down a little bit with some straight water and you take your buffer and you go over it again, you're kind of like uh, cleaning the pad and also breaking down this compound to make it kind of like a thinned out version of the compound, kind of making it more like a polish. So just go over it with some water and uh, polish it up one more time with this and then we will go to the black pad and that other compound. Okay, before we go to that second compound, um, I still need to buff out this top edge. I wet sanded this top edge uh, because remember when we had it in the spray booth, it was upside down. So it was a little bit dry looking along here. And you see this, there's a black gasket that goes on the edge here and then this goes on the car. So if you have any sort of texture or orange peel on this, it's gonna reflect onto the quarter panel of the car and you'll see it, it'll intensify it. So um, I don't recommend using the big buffer on this edge because you can tear this edge really, really easily. I just have a cheap air buffer. I think I got this from Harbor Freight probably 15, 20 years ago. I think they're relatively cheap. I don't have any more white pads for it. I need to order more. So basically just, you know, take your time with this. I usually would just put some of the compound on the pad itself. And just go slow and uh, work this top edge. You can see how nicely that buffs up compared to the doll right here. So just take your time and get that edge. Um, I have no problem with some of these Harbor Freight tools. When I buy some, I buy good tools, don't get me wrong. I do buy a lot of Harbor Freight tools as well because I'm a do-it-yourselfer. I don't do this full time. Um, so for me to go out and spend $300 on this buffer that I use a couple times a year, in my opinion, is just not worth it. I'm not going to get the use out of it. Plus, I've had that thing for so darn long, and it's still working. So, I mean, you know, as far as, like, the dust extractor vacuum for sanding and stuff like that, yes, those are expensive. The sanders are expensive as well. But that's kind of keeping my health better because I'm not sitting here breathing in all that dust. You know, even when you wear a mask, that dust gets everywhere. If you guys have, you know, block sanded and done body work and stuff, you'll know that. So I'm going to finish this top edge here, and then we're going to do that other compound. Okay, my first compound is done. It's looking real shiny. Now, um, it's always good to wipe off your panels between coats of buffing. So I lightly wet in a microfiber towel. Make sure you guys rip the tags off if yours have tags on it. Just so you don't have a tag on there for any... You shouldn't scratch it, but you just better be safe than sorry. So just take a lightly dampened microfiber towel and you wanna wipe the whole panel down really good. And then we'll go over it with the other compound. Okay. Kind of put that somewhere where it's going to stay clean. And then we're going to move on to the other compound. We're done with this one. This is the Wizard Turbo Cut. As you can tell, you saw how quickly it polished it up. This removes 1,200 and 1,500 grit sanding scratches, which is probably a little bit overkill considering I went up to 5,000, but it's always best to do that in my opinion. Um, next, we're gonna go with this machine glaze. This is gonna remove any swirls and light scratches left over from the um, Turbo Cut. Now, all paint manufacturers usually recommend a 30 day wait before you uh, put any sort of wax on your paint job, unless you get a wax that is designed to be used on a new painted surface. This is designed to be used 24 hours after paint. Um, let me see if I can find it here, right here. 
contains no wax and can be safely applied to freshly painted surfaces after paint manufacturers recommend a dry time normally of 24 hours. I'm not gonna put a coat of wax on this, but that's just something to keep in mind. If you are doing something for somebody and you wanna put some sort of a protectant coat, in, it's like a sealant on top of your freshly painted paint job, you can put something like this on there. Um, the reason why they don't want you to put a wax on a new surface is you're sealing in, you know, if the, the paint still needs to breathe, when you put a coat of wax on it, it kind of seals the top surface and doesn't let it breathe like it should. But if you look down this panel, you can see how flat it is. It's not ripply. Um, and that is all due to all that block sanding that we did and filler priming. There's just some compound there. But if you look down it, it's nice and straight and flat. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get a really, really good gloss unless it looks better on the video than it does through my screen here. I'm not sure, but I'm going to go ahead and do this other polish now. So we're going to get this black pad installed onto the buffer. Okay, we're going to keep it at about the same speed. I think I'm about 16, 1800 RPM. Looks like I'm about one click before the 18. Eh, so probably 16, 18, uh, probably 18,000. That dial's kind of funny. So now we're going to put this on. And the tip's clogged. So I need to clean out this tip. Same thing we did with the other compound. We're just going to slowly, lightly work it into the surface. And I like to work my compound until it's almost gone, until it's almost completely off the surface. You can see there's a little bit of smudging right here. Let me grab that microfiber towel and we'll wipe this off. That little bit of smudging is just from the compound. Now this is still wet, so I gotta kinda let it dry here. Okay, um, as you can see, that's after that compound, all nice and smooth. Uh, no sanding marks in the clear or anything like that. So that's gonna pretty much end this video. I'll finish polishing this in a minute. Um, I just wanna let you guys know that you can do, you can have great results, you know, by just taking your time wet sanding and buffing. Um, I don't consider myself a great painter. I consider myself a good painter, but I am willing to take the time to wet sand and buff something to make it look great, if that makes any sense to you guys. You don't need to be the greatest painter in the world to have results that look great, you know what I mean? Um, just depends on how much time you're willing to take to make something look the way you want it to look. You know, and if this is a newer vehicle, you don't, there's no point in wasting your time doing this because it's not gonna match the rest of the vehicle then. 
Um, so other than that, I'm going to end this video here. If you guys are liking what you're seeing, if you could please like and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, just let me know. Have a good day.